What's going on guys? Wanted to fire up the camera and give you a little bit more in-depth view at a recent grinder modification that I made to my 2x72 belt grinder. Uh, showed a little bit of a picture on Instagram with a little description of what this uh, updated tracking assembly is and does, but uh, I just wanted to kind of film uh, what it is and how it works. And uh, before I do that, I would like to give credit where it's due for the idea, although I certainly didn't copy the mechanism uh, verbatim, uh, I did uh, very much take inspiration uh, from another manufacturer. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know the gentleman's name who owns the company. Uh, I believe it's him and his son. But the uh, company is Reader Products Incorporated, R-E-E-D-E-R, -E -E uh, Products Inc. And uh, they have their own 2x72 belt grinder, as well as a number of other products uh, that seem to be very well made. And uh, some of them... Uh, with a number of uh, innovations uh, that I think are pretty unique to their product. So I uh, definitely invite you guys to check them out. Uh, they're fairly new, I, I think, at this time on the market. I know there's a handful of makers I've kind of read reviews from uh, who have purchased their machine and are using it. And uh, everything so far seems to be positive. Uh, there are a number of things I really like about their machines. Uh, some that I don't particularly prefer, but uh, they certainly have uh, put a lot of thought into their products, and uh, they do have some nice innovations. One of them uh, being uh, where I more or less borrowed this idea from, uh, which is for a dual axis or kind of a dual plane tracking mechanism. So uh, basically what this is, uh, it's pretty much the same as your standard tracking mechanism and that you can still go left and right uh, like most grinders do. But this adds kind of an additional dimension or adjustment. Uh, if you're looking at the top down, it kind of lets you uh, tilt your wheel kind of clockwise or counterclockwise as well, uh, which believe it or not, with just minimal adjustment really does make quite a difference and uh, does give you quite a bit of extra wiggle room or adjustment uh, if you need it. And uh, where it particularly comes in handy for my uses is for uh, trying to run the belt in reverse rotation on this flat platen. And uh, this isn't something I necessarily have a problem with with every attachment. Uh, my 8-inch contact wheel seems to run pretty true. But when I reverse this uh, with tracking kind of set on its center, uh, it tends to want to kind of drift towards the outside about this much, maybe about a quarter inch. And while I have kind of done some uh, little tweaks and adjustments to uh, more or less counteract that, uh, you know, if I pull the arm all the way out, kind of give it max length and max tension against the belt, and then I adjust my tracking wheel uh, kind of all the way to one side, I can center the belt in reverse rotation. But I really wasn't too happy with that, and I did want maybe a little bit more adjustment on top of that. And uh, this is where this idea uh, kind of really comes in handy and shines. So again, uh, all credit to Reader Products, Inc. Uh, for the idea. Uh, I don't know the gentleman. I unfortunately uh, don't even know his name. But uh, that did kind of get me thinking and uh, kind of sparked my own ideas for a similar mechanism. And uh, that's what you see here. So... Uh, on this one, I did want to keep with kind of the main theme of this machine, and that is uh, being able to adjust everything without tools. So uh, I do have one uh, screw here uh, that's pretty much at a fixed tension. Uh, it does have a lock washer underneath it, which is why it's a little proud right now. But uh, the main adjustment is just this knob, and then this is uh, kind of a tightening knob with a little slot milled underneath that washer uh, to kind of give it some left and right movement. And uh, really, as far as this knob is concerned, it's really just more for reference. Uh, it's not entirely necessary, but it does give you a positive stop, uh, you know, when you're kind of making your left and right adjustments. Now, obviously, when I turn it in this way, it's going to push it away and move it on its own. With tension on the belt, uh, it'll actually allow it to pull uh, to the right as well. But if needed, I can kind of push it with my finger uh, to go kind of the opposite direction of the screw uh, if necessary. But uh, without wanting to make this video terribly long, let me just show you kind of how it works. Show you kind of the issue I have under normal 
uh, tracking circumstances will go forward. Okay, so right now we're pretty well centered. With some pretty solid tracking. I got a little bit of a fray on the corner of that belt there. But uh, nice rock solid tracking in the forward position. However, if I go backwards, it does tend to drift just a little bit uh, to the outboard side of the machine. So that's where this kind of comes in handy. So if you loosen that up and actually tighten the screw, you can see it start to move over on the wheel there. See already we're pretty much already centered. We'll do a little bit more. Alright, so right now we're perfectly centered going in reverse. Now I am more or less on the inside edge of that tracking wheel. But it is still tracking rock solid, uh, not wanting to move up on you. That's why I didn't get too much dust on the camera lens here. But uh, as you can see, uh, it does do its job. It does give you that little extra leg room there, so to speak, uh, for reverse tracking. And uh, where this is really going to come in handy, uh, not just on my flat platen, but other attachments I have, uh, if I'm not getting a good reverse rotation tracking, uh, that just gives me that much more wiggle room uh, to kind of adjust that, to center it up, and then I can, uh, you know, sharpen my knives, uh, edge up or edge away if I'm using kind of the top of the belt, and uh, have that belt moving away from me, uh, which is often uh, quite useful especially when sharpening uh, very thin blades or uh, when you're trying to raise a burr things like that uh, or when you're using kind of a very high uh, micron or high polish belt uh, you don't necessarily always want to be coming towards your edge uh, with something like an engineered abrasive uh, you know you slip a little bit you peel it off or you cut the belt or uh, kind of throw your knife down at you so a uh, much safer way to do things, and uh, that just little bit of extra adjustment really makes all the difference. And I'm sure if I played even with uh, the belt tension a little bit more, as well as the primary tracking, uh, I might be able to get that drifted over to the center of the wheel a little bit better. But I'm thinking my main problem is just maybe needing a little bit more adjustment, uh, perhaps, in this flat platen. And, uh, you know, instead of having to go through all that, uh, truing everything up, uh, it's just a simple turn of a couple of knobs, lock it down, and we are good to go. So uh, that's that, guys. Uh, again, check out Reader Products, Inc. if you haven't. Uh, they've got some really nice products and seem to be very reasonably priced. Uh, I do need to probably send a message uh, to the gentleman who owns the company and uh, who I believe kind of came up with that idea. Uh, just to kind of uh, let them know how well uh, the concept works and then I kind of put my own take on it. But, uh, you know, maybe he'll see this video, maybe not. But uh, at any rate, I thought you guys might enjoy seeing that. Uh, maybe it'll give you some of your own ideas as well. So uh, that's it, guys. Uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.